The Layla Show. Bienvenue to The Layla Show, a culture cast where the power of conversation knows no bounds. Join us as we embark on thought-provoking conversations that explore the ever-evolving trends, untold history, divulge diverse cultures, and profound questions of existence. With your host, me, the magnificent Layla Ziari, and today we have the magnificent Nick Gerard, and I'm so fucking excited. I'm stoked right now. This beautiful man is just like a beautiful entity. I've never met him before, but he's literally like my best friend for life already. And he wrote this sexy ass book, which I'm holding in my hand with, which nobody who isn't watching the video clips that I post will ever know, but it's called In the Beginning, because humanity is a little fucked and we're all going to die and we're all going back to the basics. (laughs) Welcome, Nick. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Leia. What a what a great intro. Oh, yeah. You're on point. I love this. Oh, I knew we'd get along very well. Starting it off real good. No, I, I, I like your you, – you've got great energy. And you're you're very, like, original. Like, this is – this is what is good about society. You, your show. This is this is what we uh, this is what we need in life. I'm doing it because honestly, like, let's just like give my I don't know. This is my show. I'm supposed to give you an intro, but honestly, I started podcasting because like I have traveled so fucking much and I've been everywhere. I've been in micro societies all my life, and I was like, yeah. what do I? And I and I have a healing background. Like I'm super spiritual, whatever. Like. All right. I have a Reiki background, a yoga background, but I, like, never did anything other than keep learning from these things. And I was like, well, the podcast is just the platform to just be yeah. authentic and just say fuck it. And, like, yeah. just, like bring people like, all over the world who attract that vibe trap. So, anyways, introduce yourself, Nick. Sure, sure. So, yes, hello. I'm Nick Jura. And uh, I live here in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. I'm not really yeah, from yeah. here. Grew up about uh, an hour north of Seattle. Went to college near Pittsburgh. Floated. That's where my wife. I floated around Philadelphia, Pittsburgh for a while. Then went to San Diego. Then New York City. Then Miami and Boca Raton, Florida. And then now I'm up here in Delaware. And uh, by let's see. So I have I have two jobs. One of passion and one of necessity. My job of oh, passion. We all have the honey. I still drive Uber for necessities. So. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I mean, that's, that, yeah, I love that. I mean, so, I mean, you know how it is. You pay the, pay the bills. I work in the financial industry, which I loathe. Dirty, 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 naughty industry. I, uh, I can't stand being in the financial world, which is why I started writing this book. No joke. Is because I was like on the search for purpose, hating my life, sitting at work, watching all the terrible things that are happening in the world and wanted to do something about it, help society. And like, and I, but I was trapped, you know, like, hope you don't mind me telling you this, but no, like, I want, no, this is what it's all about, honestly, before you even get it. Like, honestly, this is why we have the show because I like, there's a lot of shit that we can just push love and light and fucking positivity, which we do, yeah. but it's real shit. Like we are all fucking struggling to make ourselves in right. this fucking modern day age. It's a shit show. We all have to work jobs we hate. I have to work my fucking, yeah. I published two books. I'm a fucking light being. I can. I can manipulate the energy of any goddamn room, but guess what? I still have to make my money, and so, like, yeah. that, amen. That's the worst part, you know, and that's and that's what drove me to write. So I do financial work, like, I was at work today, which is a horrible day, and then... <laughs> I do, I do, <laughs> oh, my God, you're, you're great. You're, you're great. I, I, oh, I like, this is great. But, yeah, I mean, and so by, by my passion is writing, and that's how I got into this, and, like, I was just so fed up with like being trapped at work, you know, with student loan debt and I didn't have a choice. And so then I started just like oh. getting these ideas and I would just write like on the subway. Um, and which is impossible because it's so packed. You can't really write. But so then we moved to yeah, Philadelphia. There's guys jerking their dicks off. There's women crying. There's <laughs> trying, to, trying to scribble some words on a little paper. You should have seen it. It was like a mess too. Like I, my first draft is all a handwritten, no joke. I admire the fuck trend. out of that, though. Yeah. And so, I mean, I mean, yeah, in a nutshell, that's me. But, yeah, brought that experience brought me to uh, this book. And so that's – I can kind of go into the book and give you a little detail on that. I want you like. to because I want to talk about every – like, honestly, sure. like, I want you here because I, I, I haven't read the whole thing, but that's I have read some of it. But it's like – I don't know. It's like the existential, like, dread that we're all feeling. Like, I, yeah. I just went out tonight and I was talking to people and they were like – 
the generation like after us like because we're we're similar ages and we're like kind of at the cusp of between um like technology and realism and it's like the generation before us is gonna fucking kill us long before you and i are dead i and know I children but i thought it would be like my children and my grandchildren if i would to have them but no we're we're gonna witness the fucking apocalypse i agree now and that yeah. sucks it's, it's a complete mess and that that's what drove me to like writing so this book is really it's a uh it changes the story of creation reverses the roles of the afterlife in order to challenge traditional thinking. So in this book, God is evil. The devil is good. They're fighting for control of the afterlife, using humans as pawns to change the future of existence. Like a, it's a very bold, and I, I you know, I, I, I know, but honestly, Nick, I feel that way in the, in the grand scheme of things. It's existentially, but keep going. Cause then oh. I'll comment on it after. But like, honestly, like what I always say, like, Earth is the representation of heaven and hell within, like, we're also, are we going to, you know, there's religion that's like, are we yeah. going to die and go to heaven? Like, bitch, we are living in the foundation of our existential heaven and yeah. hell in the precipice of our well heaven. Said. Well said, Layla. Yeah, we're, that's, that's really kind of what I'm doing in the book. I'm, like, saying that life on this planet right now is hell. And that's, like, yeah. the real hell that, like, so what I'm doing is very controversial. Basically... I'm basically challenging God and all religions on the planet, saying that we can never achieve world peace as long as religion exists. No, because it's separatism and it just divides us and conquers really? us into bases. Just like, just like, okay, now I'm gonna get real. Now Please. they're gonna really, now they're gonna really hate. Me. It's just like, okay, what are we doing? Okay, yes, yeah, okay, slavery exists. Black people are definitely oppressed, but like, what do you do when you? Okay, yes. Division of separatism, and it's wrong. Like, we are all one. And it sucks because, honestly, religion is the fundamentals of, like, Jesus Christ is my fucking homie, ride or die for the rest of my fucking life. But am I Christian? Am I Catholic? No, I was, I was raised atheist. I'm a fucking spiritual bitch. Like, my mom doesn't believe in anything. My mom does not believe in God, the universe, anything. And I, I believe in the existential, like, beauty of everything. Like, I remember studying religions in school and, like, Taoism. Taoism. I was like, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> like the, All right. Like the on. fundamentals of nature. But it's like, yeah. I mean, like. You're right. Right. Like, we're living in literal hell. And it's our job to create our heaven on earth within fucking the depths of hell. Yeah, and it's it's impossible for people to live, you know, and and a lot of things that people don't realize about religion. So what, the way my take in the book is like, you know, if, if God exists, God's doing one of two things. God is either creating all these terrible events that you see happening across the globe, or God is allowing them to happen. Either way, it either means way, God, what? yeah, any 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 anyone that has the ability to prevent the suffering of innocent life and chooses not to. Is evil. So that, and that's the story I've created here. It's like, this book is really, it's trying to unite humanity around a vision of like, hey, stop worshiping God. You know, right. if, if we all stop worshiping God on the same page of just, okay, forget our religions. Let's unite and work together. That's the whole point of this book. That's why I wrote it is to unite that's humanity. That's the only, like, honestly, cause you know, just cause you wrote this book, like, you know, we're in a spiritual fucking war right now. And the yeah. only fucking way we're ever going to get on top is by uniting as man to man like Agreed. if i don't connect with you and you don't connect with me and i mean but it's like yeah. everything like we need to connect with each other right now because it's like there is no god like there is god maybe like we all believe in something better than ourselves bigger than ourselves yeah. not better because we are our own gods like right. okay oh yeah you know, well said you're right it's up to us to create you know we are the gods of ourselves we can all the gods of our own fucking universes right exactly. And, and you know, it, it's it's really, and this is a bold thing for me to say, but religion, a lot of religions, they uh, they pretty much oppress everyone that isn't a straight man. You know, I mean. If, right. Like, look at Lilith. Like, my I think <laughs> she was like, I want to have sex and be a f sovereign being, and I ain't going to lay down my man's sword and fucking take him <laughs> in submission. Like, okay. All right. I'm the Antichrist. Uh -oh. All righty then. <laughs> But I'm not, like, I'm not, because, like, I live in a spiritual world, and all of my friends are fucking hella spiritual, like, my best friends are astrologers and whatever, and it's like, right. we're all like, fuck all y'all. Yeah, exactly, and that's, what, but that's what brings people together, is that, is your, is your mindset that you're just talking about, you and your friends, that's what we need, that kind of energy, where there's no one is 
judged. All religion does is judge everyone else, and which I don't understand. Like, I grew up religious. Which is fucked up because they say God forgives, right? It doesn't make any sense, so you can do whatever you want? Like, oh, oh. But God will, God will forgive you for murder, but also don't swear, don't use the Bible, don't have sex. I, Don't I indulge in material pleasures, you fucking lascivious slut. You took a dick <laughs> in your mouth today. Oh. You're going to hell, but also God will forgive you, which is a co- walking contradiction of anything that makes any fucking sense in I any agree. righteous universe. I, I agree so much. And, and you see all like these, uh, you know, you, you ever see like these big, like, you know, mega church preachers? They're like these rich, ridiculous, pretentious people that are buying like these. Hover limos living in these mansions. I'm like, they're sticking their dick out in the world and letting the world suck it while we all fucking fall apart, fall <laughs> together. They, they should be living in like digging a hole in the woods and living with like, their clothes or leaves. They should be living in squalor, but yeah, we, but like we, but yeah, you and I, like, and like you said, you're working a job. I'm working fucking bullshit. I've been on, I've had businesses collapse. I've had my sole purpose collapse a million times. I've had friends leave. I've had lovers leave. And it's like, at the end of the day, like, my life is fucking blessed. But like, I ain't gonna still have to work these fucking bullshit things. And so do you. And like, but yeah, the church. Yeah. Loaded rich, you know, judging all of us. Like, well, they should, yeah, they should be living in squalor. Hallelujah. Bye bye. It doesn't make it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. And like when I got into like well a big part like the first half of my book I'm like creating the world in a different way. You know that God is evil, devil is good. They're fighting, and devil the devil um, wants to give God this beautiful earth that the devil created. You know, and then the second part of the book is like modern day times, and it's like loosely based on my wife and I in New York City in our horrible financial jobs. And like my wife was just like New York City is so expensive like, too. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. And, like, people used to treat my wife really – she was an assistant at numerous different financial firms. And they used to treat her, like, really poorly, like, just because of her title of an assistant. And, that yeah. drove, and like, that drove me, too. Like, how can you treat someone differently? Well, basically, how can you not believe in equality? You know, how can you treat someone not as an equal just because of their title? And right. so that that, I, that drove me insane. And so that, that's the big purpose behind my writing. It's just, like, channeling all that negative energy into something good, you know, something that can help. I know you're big into energy and a lot of people and sorry to the people listening whose podcast has never got published. There's only three people in my life whose podcast I did not publish, but it was just so harped in the darkness that I literally have had them sitting on my desktop for like three, (laughs) for over three months. And I'm like, I really want to say what you're saying, but it's like, because it is, it's like, you know, you have to kind of, like, it's important to really touch on the darkness, but, like, you and I can touch on the darkness. Yeah. But it's, like, it's birthing the light because, like, there is so much darkness. We don't really need to harp on it, per se, Good but, like, point. we need to kind of touch on it to get our point across yes. to get something better. And that is a very fucking, like, fine line and a delicate balance. Agreed. And, 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 so, and you need to – I like what you said because – it's important to put in the darkness because that is reality. You know, we have to come with, we can't, we can't glaze over it. We have to accept reality. It is what it is. I got to go tomorrow to my terrible job. And I'm fighting with them right now too, because they're making us, you know, this whole thing coming back to the office. All these cave people are like, these men in charge are like, come back to the office just because they want to control us. And like, I can do my job at home. You know, I don't need this. You know, I don't need the stress. It's just control. And so, yeah, you, you, you talk about the things that are terrible, but then obviously like what we're doing now is like, how can we unite? How can we help? What can we do differently? That's, that's the beauty of conversations like this, you know, and that's why I'm glad you had your show because you're like, it's very obvious in your show about the energy you have, like the positivity, you know, you need that strong energy. That's how that, that helps us. I'm, so good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a poet too. I, I saw that you had two poetry books. When you, you I know, but they're all shit, honestly. Like, they're not shit, but, like, when I wrote those, I was coming from a place of, like, totally living in a mask. Like, I was yeah. living yeah. from a point of, like, I got it, like, because I have words to say, but, like, I told you before we even got on this podcast. <laughs> yes, guys, we just met tonight. We're actually, like, best friends. You want to know it? Hi, I love him. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I shame myself even still to say, like, you published these books of poetry. But, like, and not even shame, like, in a way that, like, I shouldn't have, but it's, like, I published a book of love poems, my first poem, like, book, oh. like, 
to another person, and now I look at love so differently, and then I put publish yeah. a book in my cruise, and then I have all these fucking poems sitting on my Google Drive that of how I actually feel about the world, but I just haven't figured out how to put them in a collection, so I al- almost feel like, as a writer, I'm failing myself as a writer, which is why I love your fucking book. Because <laughs> I'm right now, so, like, I have I have some cool friends. I was hanging out with them a few weekends ago. They were like, Laylism, you have a philosophy going. And then I called my other friend, girl, you don't have to write a philosophy book. Just take all of the poems that you're not publishing and fucking call them Laylisms. Like, That's what good. are you waiting for? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So, like, yeah, I'm a poet, but I'm a fucking false prophet in every right. Well, no no way. The, the fact that you're writing it down means you're not false. Like, that, that's the beauty of what you are doing. The fact you've written it down, you've gotten so much further than a lot, so many people. Like, that's the hardest part is actually putting pen to paper. You know, I that, know, that's like, the fact deal. that you publish the bullshit instead of that is, like, it's total bullshit. And I have to – honestly, this is my podcast, and I'll be a fucking liar and a fucking piece of shit if I don't call my own self out. Like, I uh, went for years. Like, I've been on this spiritual journey for years, and I always had a mask. And I think that part of the reason I started this pod- podcast is because I actually have to be vulnerable to, like, be myself. And this podcast, everybody who listens to my podcast or comes on my podcast is, like – Layla, you authentic fucking container. You <laughs> fucking sick fuck. Like, we love you. And it's like, yeah. thank God. But, like, that's what I need to, res- like, and this is why I really like your book, because you're doing that. But, like, in my writing, I always was, like, still wearing the mask that I was that's wearing nice. around people. Because, like, I wanted to, like, because I was always on this path and I was always very vulnerable, but I always wanted mm-hmm. to present that I was, like, better or something. Like, no, I don't know shit. I'm, I'm vulnerable as hell. <laughs> well, we all don't beat yourself up. We all do that. Oh, like everyone wants to think, oh, I'm I'm doing well, I'm doing great, this is going well. But like at the end of the day, it's what you admitting that that's important, and you doing the show is, I mean, that's your medicine. You know that that's medicine. like it, it's, it's like fucking reckoning, <laughs> and it's mine too because it makes it makes me feel good too. I'm like, look, there's so Layla's out there. She's she's. She's actually expressing how you know she did wear a mask, you know. It makes me feel comfortable to say, "Look, I used to do the same thing." You know, I used to want to present an air of, you know, um, of uh, doing what. Well. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and then when I start, when I when I really stopped doing that is when I started writing and doing like my and marketing it because like. You know how people are on social media. Everyone's trying to be sexy. And cool. Yeah, like, oh, not... so, and I, like, trust me, we are both sexy ass bitches <laughs> to the public. You got well, some two hot bitches on the podcast. Like, yeah, no, every, <laughs> but everybody's trying, to, and even me, as fucking deep as I am, as raw as I am with myself, it's like I still wanted to present that as like. That's what you mean? But I got it. I got it. I figured it out because I was too fucking vulnerable to admit that I don't have it figured out. Yeah, and that that's a that's a tough thing to finally like admit to yourself, you know? Like that's a really healthy thing. That's that's what I used to have to do myself all the time is just like, look, this is who I am. I don't care. Yeah, I'm making a fool of myself on the internet, but I I don't know what else to do to market no, my No, you're not. You're being authentic, which is why I fucking love you. Like <laughs> I have a lot of people on my podcast like to the world this man posted a photo of like his, his pumpkin on his head the other day, just being authentic. And I literally was like, I post, I reposted it. I was like, I fucking love my guests. And I meant that with all my heart. Like, I don't know you, but I like, fucking love you with all of my heart. And I can say that because like your authenticity just like, <laughs> true. and it is everything. And like, this is why I have this show. Now I have to be authentic and vulnerable, but it's yeah. been hard. And it's like, but like real recognizes real. Like I saw you, I was like, Soul tribe. It's funny you say that too, because like, yeah, when I first started, I didn't know what to do. You know, everyone was to take a picture of myself on a Ferrari or a, in a jet. Like, what am I? What am I gonna do? So I I'm doing, hate you. Yeah, I started doing like what I do is goofy shenanigans, and like people, like people enjoy those kind of things. It's just, it's just me being myself and being silly and being self-deprecating. No one wants to be some, watch some arrogant person do arrogant things and, i know, you know but everybody on the internet is an arrogant person i know i know every, everybody every, everyone is you know it's like it's, it's it's tiresome it's like the same thing everyone does and so i try I to do silly things and make fun of myself and it, it actually it people are like it because i, I, don't, I don't care and that's how i like 
I, I send books like all over the world. Like, I mean, everywhere. Pakistan. I got yours. Go- I got yours. I got yours. <laughs> Bulgaria, uh, Morocco, Kenya. I mean, I, I meet people all through my Instagram account and I'll, I'll send free books out. And that's how I kind of get the word out. And it's, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm an independent author and no one knows who I am. That's, that's fine. But, you know, I'm. I'm well, we got to know who the fuck you are, period. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like everyone needs to know who the fuck I am, and I feel like everyone... But that's how you do it. It's, like, it's yeah. by the raw connection, and it's just, I like... Agree. And I feel connection. like... Yeah. And like you said, like, don't fucking praise me for being an author. My books are bullshit. The only thing you should <laughs> praise me for is my podcast, because this is authentic. That, that's true. Like, this, this is what people want to see. People this want... This is what we that. need to see, and it, it, yeah. it does. It puts you in a vulnerable place. It puts me in a vulnerable yeah. place. But let's be honest. I'm not helping anyone sitting my... My, my, I have a great ass, but if I sit in on a Ferrari, I'm just another dumb bitch influencer. <laughs> you sit your ass on a Ferrari, you're just another <laughs> fucking fraud. And it's like, yeah. nobody, we don't have the time. Our planet yeah. doesn't have the time for fraudulent activity anymore. We are a dying breed. Or I don't give a shit if we burn tomorrow, but if we have to burn tomorrow, like we have, it's our duty to leave a legacy of authenticity, of just yeah. fucking. Yeah, it's, it's 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 so short-sighted of humanity to behave. It's like a repetitive cycle of, you know, since the beginning of time, all, all humanity does is they harvest the resources of the earth until they don't exist and then move to the next one, enslave the population of various, all over the world, and uh, go to war. It's like a continuous... It keeps, cycle. yeah, continue. Even since, like, Atlantis and Lemuria, like, oh, we got science, tech, like, like, Oh, I don't know if anyone really believes in that. It doesn't matter. But, like, the story of Atlantis is we got higher technology. And when we got our crystal power, we blew ourselves up because of our ego and our greed. And it's, like, it perpetuates through time and time again. And it's, like, okay, well, we're still doing that. But it's, like, yep. if I'm here and I have any fucking right to be here, then I am going to fucking speak against that. And I don't care if I never get paid, if I never get recognition, but it is my goddamn duty as a fucking light being to speak on that. Well said, Layla. Yes, that is all right. We are on the same page. I like what you just said. That is, it's our duty to do something. We have no choice. Yeah, we, we don't. You know, it's all been the same since the dawn of time, and we have to... We have to change. We have to make something different. We can't just keep harvesting the oil till it's gone. Maybe it won't be gone tomorrow, but maybe in 200 years, it'll be oh, gone. Yeah. And then what are we going to do? Go back to the sperm whales? And start- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They will just kill all the sperm oh, whales. You know right. that? They already killed them. So. It's- and then, like, okay, but somebody actually, like, I didn't, I, I, honestly, I'm an ignorant bitch, like, to a little bit. Like, I literally, because not ignorant in the sense that, like, I'm ign- like, I know what's going on on a higher perspective. But I don't pay attention to the fundamental details because it will literally kill me. But I someone told me about concrete the other day, and they're like, you know, everything's concrete, and it literally just, like, eats all of our water. And I was like, oh, god damn, It's, like, it's just, like, literally, like, I know oil, but, like, I genuinely, and it's not because I'm trying to not be educated. It's just because I can't put my focus on how fucked things are you and can't. still be a person. I agree. You, you, can't, you can't go too far. Like, otherwise, you, I mean, what are you going to do if you, if you drive on a road? You're, you know, you're polluting the earth because the road is... Right, like, so I'm a piece of shit now. Ex- exactly. Like, you have... It's not the, the... You have to think of the big picture. The big picture is like what you said. Us doing what we're doing right now. You writing your poetry. Me writing the book. Trying to reach people. To make people be authentic. To make... The, to, to, to encourage people. And... People don't encourage people enough, you know. People criticize, and people are. No, they're like, you're authentic, you fucking ratchet hoe. You should go get <laughs> a bucket. I, I, I implore that. I'm like, tell me to go kill myself again, because like. Good for you. Good for you for saying that, though. It's like, yeah, it's like, yes, yeah, say, say it again. It's fine, you know. And fine, and it, I'll take it on. Yeah, and in a way, it actually helps those kind of people because, like, look, I don't know what happened to you and why you're being this mean. But you don't need to be. I'll, I'll, I'll greet you with kindness no matter what. I'll help you no matter what. Yeah, always. We will, uh, like, and this is, like, something I've had to learn after 30 years. It's, like, because I've always had so many haters in my life. And um, right now I have a lot of love in my life. But it's, like, yeah. I just look at my life as a whole. And it's, like, it's been so much shade and so much hate. And, so and like, before I was confident in myself, like, I really took that on. And it was very, very fucking difficult. Uh, because I'm just a human. And I'm very sensitive and very empathic. And, of course, that's but, like, 
Now I'm like, I implore you to fucking belittle me because if you are belittling me, you should, that means you need to look at what it is that I'm triggering within yourself. And if I'm triggering you, then I'm doing my fucking job. That took 30 years of me being okay with that because Uh like, you have to get to the point where you can't take that on. I implore people to despise me. I implore people to hate me. Bye. (laughs) <laughs> okay, but yeah, you're right. It is helpful, but it takes forever to like gain the confidence that you have now to do that. Like, when I, I mean, I don't mind telling you this. I, I mean, I grew up. I mean, I was kind of, I was picked on a lot when I was a kid. You know, I'm, I'm a very, and I, I was, I'm a very. I, I hate hearing that that you were too. You know, and I don't understand. I never understood it. Like, I kind of was grew up in a very, an encouraging household, but a very shelter, a little shelter, and so I was a little weird. Like, you ever seen Blast from the Past with Brendan Fraser? <laughs> Kind of like, when I went to college, I was like, oh, hello, nice to meet you, sir. And people were like, what the hell is wrong with this? I never drank alcohol, you know, and I just, it was, I was kind of a weird guy, but when I was a kid, you know, people, um, bullies would gravitate towards that. I was an easy target. Oh, yeah. You know? And it really affected me. And then I just, as I grew up and just kind of gained more confidence and, uh, you know, you, 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 you kind of grow out of that a bit. And then writing helped me too, because it helped me get confidence, you know, I was like, okay, I, I'm not, you know, worthless. I'm not, I, I, I do have a message. I want to be kind, and that's what I'll do. I will do that because I know it's virtuous, you know. Right. And, like, we're really lucky we get to that because it is really hard. Like, my father's Iranian, and, like, I grew up in these white people schools with all these white people. They used to call me Sansnigger and, like, make fun uh, of my nose. And people used to literally beat me, beat me up for just being different. And it's like, honestly, if that okay. happened to me today, I wouldn't. But imagine, like. The shit we go through for as like children being different is so fucking hard, and it's like yeah. thank God people like you and I get out of that because like yeah. we look at our trauma and we heal it. But like there are so many people who literally never make it out of that cycle, and it's yeah. just fucking sad because all the people who get bullied, all the people who get picked on, are genuinely probably light workers and like the yeah. souls who are just born here to be different, and it sucks. Like I self-deprecated for years of my life like my parents sent me to rehab when I was 16 because I was like I'm not going to school I fucking hate these people I'm just gonna do drugs in the forest because I can't I, I can't blame systematically you. can't handle the abuse but like it took my mother till last year of my life and I'm 30 to be like oh my god you really went through that and I'm like yeah and you didn't yeah. fucking pay attention and I don't blame you and I'm not mad at you but also like as a parent it's your responsibility to look at your children because like I don't ever want to have children, but if I did, like, it would be my responsibility to see if they were different and see right. how, because, like, the world is very fucking cruel to people who are different so until you're old enough to be awesome. And yeah. that's, and, and, like, like, literally, most people kill themselves and don't, and OD yeah. and don't make it. Like, and that's fucking sad. It's, it's terrible. I, look, I, I'm so sorry that you went through that. Like that's I'm just sorry terrible. Sorry, you went it's through kind of, the, anything like that too. But it's it's, it's terrible, you know. Like how could someone treat someone like that? And, and it's taught like kids doing that. Their parents taught them to do it. And so, their parents are like, "That's fine, do that." It's and that's what's going on today. It's like these people aren't evolving. You know, you don't need to re- like if your parent is telling you to treat people like not an equal. You you need to evolve. It's up to everyone to evolve and change and become a better person. Like I think about that every. I need to do it more. I need to think about my more. But like I know that I can't I always have to be accepting. I know I have to always treat people as equals and and why wouldn't you want that anyway? Like exactly because we're all equals. Like it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter who you are, like we are all fucked and fucking <laughs> <laughs> we are all living this human experience and it's like yeah. i've never got that and i like and people like on the spiritual path or whatever like ask me all the time like you felt like that since you were born and i was like yeah i've been literally fucked since the day yeah. i got out the womb my mom will tell you if i got her on the podcast this day she's like you fought you did not want to fucking be here like no shit really? but i do want to be like now i want to be here but it's like i fought tooth in it I did not want to come out of this woman's vagina because I literally yeah. knew the suffering and she's like yeah. why did you fight well, so hard why did you not want to be here so hard because I knew the injustice and being a child and being a teenager is not something I would ever wish upon anyone and that's what I'm saying it's like thank god you and I made it because if you yeah. are weird and you are different it's like we need to celebrate that like we need to appreciate the soul like 
And we need, because those are, those children are our future and we're letting them just die off from addiction because they're confused. And it's like, but who's going to save us if we don't protect them? It's, 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 it's all of our, it's our duty. Like, I really like that you said it's, it's, it's a duty of life of being a good human, you know, as much as we can, you you know, you need to help as many people as you can, whatever, whatever you can do, you know, and, and. Isn't it hard when you have to go to your three different jobs and your three, like your jobs that you hate because you're like, okay, I have to be here to pay my bills and I hate it. I don't have a choice. Ah, exactly. Yeah. I, I've i been trying to get out of the financial world for like, I mean, since I started, I just didn't have a choice with all this. I had to pay my student loans, you know, buried under debt and just took a job to pay a bill. I, and it's I killing. Oh, and oh, the financial world, let me tell you, I mean, it is like, there's like so much ridiculous pressure for nothing. People are yelling at me every day, and it's just like, I mean, I don't oh, need. Stop. I know. I mean, it makes me want to just go to the woods and grow potatoes with my wife and our cat. Yeah, honey, I've done it to college. I've gotten a lot of shit from that in my life from regular people because they didn't want student loans. But I have done a million trade schools. I've done a lot of million things I've never understood. I am like a woman, so I do get away with a lot of shit that you don't like. <laughs> here. Well, wait. Look, I'm I'm a big believer in the female lead, just so you know. Like, I, it, quite honestly, my wife and I fantasize a lot about every man stepping down from their position of power all over the world. Y'all and need to. You, y'all need, I, I'm I, not saying you, because you're already there. Like, I love you with all my heart. I would literally die for you if you asked me tomorrow. But that was, that was, that was literally, like, I had that before you came on my show. Like, yeah, imagine every man stepping down and every and they're replaced by a council of women and the women are making the, the responsible decision. Honestly, go back to ancient Egypt, because if you look at ancient Egypt, the men, the women were in charge and they fucking guarded their look, men's decision and they were in charge. And that is for a reason, because like, honestly, like and like you said, like you've had to exist. I had to exist in a lot of turmoil but as soon as I was old enough to work my fucking magic spell. Like, I do I do work jobs I don't like sometimes because they don't want to be under the thumb of a man, but I have also gotten nearly every opportunity in my life to literally experience these other cultures from a man supporting me. And, like, not even in a sexual way. Like, I, I learned a long time ago to be like, honey, I ain't fucking you. Honey, I ain't marrying you. Good for you. But if Good you want to support my fucking ass and give me money – to go live this alternative path, I am here for it. There you and go. And I have there taken every opportunity, and I have fucking devoured it for Good. everything. Good. It's like that's and, exactly. And you know what? Right. That man, the men that I leave in that week, like okay, there's probably men I've dated who will be like that fucking bitch. She didn't <laughs> give me what I wanted. But there is no man in my life who has financially supported me to just be myself that will ever say a goddamn bad word about me. There we go. That that means you're that, that means you're doing it right with these guys. That that that's that that's a good model for for women everywhere. Mm-hmm. I think I think we need to. And I never tell my story, but this is why I have this podcast. I have to <laughs> I have to start telling my story because. But it is like that. But then I've also been in like seriously toxic relationships where I've literally been beaten and abused and like manipulated for like my but also manipulated for my like too but that you look at the other side and it's like no women should be in charge because we are like and and it's not to say I love men with all my heart most of my friends are men I honestly have a harder time getting along with women than I do with men like I can kick it with any man anytime anywhere my wife is similar yeah it's not it's you know, there, there's two types of people in the world: people that believe in equality and people that don't. Many, the most, oh, I'm sorry, good people believe in equality, bad people do not. A large yeah. majority of bad people are men. That's the problem. And that's, you, that's the truth. It, 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 it really is. You know, all the, I mean, that that's where it comes from. And people aren't saying that, but that is the problem. It's men. It's Men the fucking doing, problem with yeah. masculine energy. And even, like, the like there's women I would literally not touch with a 10-foot pole because they're so yeah. fucking... But, like, look at what made them that way. It's, like... It's, it's a man. Yeah, yeah, it's the masculine society they live in, and I, like, I look at myself, but I can't look at myself as, like, better than anyone, and I don't, but I also look at myself, and I look at how I look at it, like, but I look at how women who have been hurt and abused look at it as, like, and eh, and eh, eh. Which is also toxic, but it is, it's coming from a toxic masculine society, wholeheartedly. Like, power, it's power. They crave power, 
and they, they, and they use that. And look, hearing that you went through some abusive times, I'm sorry, Layla. That's terrible. And Most was, of the time. Most and of the time. I, I, um, I mean, no, no. And the only reason that that happened is because one, one thing a, a man has over a female is strength. And they're cave people and they use it against them. And that is disgusting. That's and any man that does that. I, and, I, like, it doesn't matter who you are. Like, even me as an enlightened woman who's always, you belittle me and put me down to the point where, like, I wrap my life around you and you get me to support you. And that's how it was. Like, I know not everybody is on my frequency, sure. But even me at my frequency, it's like, you get me to rip, rope my power around you and, like, give you this protection and this glory and you utilize it to manipulate me and fucking abuse me. Like, I'm going to fall on my fucking ass. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's what happens, and it's 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 and that's been happening since the dawn of time. Women being manipulated by men, abused by men, and it's uh, yeah. Look, back to Lilith, which I brought up at the beginning. <laughs> of the yeah. I mean, it's it, it's a terrible thing, and they're, they're, it, that's the big change that has to occur. And a lot of it, you know, a lot of it comes from religion. You know, a lot of it stems from that. So it, it, it preaches a uh, a male dominated society. We can't have that, you know. It can't be a male-dominated society anymore. It's just no, it a, literally can't because like men are just raping and manipulating for power and greed. But then also look at those men; they don't actually have a good partner by their side. Like there's no value in partnership. Genuinely, it's all yeah. manipulation and abuse. It's like mm-hmm. because honestly, I want like I will hold out being single for the rest of my fucking life. Till I find a man who will literally go be the power bitch while I fucking make decisions and fucking Good. love him with all my heart. And I'm respected and appreciated and valued for all my insights and my values and my intuition. Yeah. And he, he, can go, he can go rule the world literally while I sit there on a pedestal and be fed grapes. Like, I'm yeah. good. But that, but that's... I, I truly believe that that is the way. Men, men are good at operations and taking direction. And that direction yeah. should be given from the female lead. Right, because it's, it's honestly, like, all of people, like, all the women like me right now, like, honestly, in the last few weeks, I have stepped back and I said, I am not working anymore. I am not going to go to my jobs. I am not going to be a business bitch anymore because it's actually unnatural. And it is. Much, I will always have companies and whatever, but what I am doing mm-hmm. in society is genuinely unnatural yeah. for my, me as a woman. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not natural, like, and <laughs> I am never happy when yeah. I'm operating in this man's world because I'm trying to compete against men to do something I don't even believe in. I literally want to sit on my sexy ass and literally just be worshipped and give good insights and give good value to the world. Like, I'm not supposed to be in this place. Like, it's wrong. It's fundamentally yes. backwards. Yes. I don't want yes. to do it. Yes, well, all right. All right. Yeah. You. Yeah. Amen. To, like, worship women. Let us be the goddesses again. Literally. Hey. I, and let, I, let you fight by our side because you're meant to protect us. You're meant to fucking protect us and make us beautiful world. Yes, agree. you're meant to go work. You're meant to go fucking, agree. but you're supposed to use us as your guiding light yes. to, like, yes. make intuitive, <laughs> nice decisions and not yes. enslave the world. Like, you're supposed to use our heart and our soul to make right. nice business decisions. You fucking, <laughs> not you, but fuck. I know. Oh, you, we... This this is a great conversation. I gotta tell you, this like my wife and I. Podcast I've we, probably ever done in my life. <laughs> we, my wife and I, talk about the exact same thing. It's like unnatural for her to do what she's doing, and it's not. I'm natural. here. The rules need to change. Yeah, you take the direct, take the female lead, and I, I encourage men to to do that. Is to to. Stop being the boss. Stop stop making decisions. Take your wife's lead. Take you take your partner's lead. People I love most in my life, like, who everybody in their life values me in their life, look at me and, like, I'm going to marry this fucking boss bitch who's going to mutilate me and abuse me. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And? (laughs) And? Like... And what about me? Like, what do do us goddesses do? We just... uh, We literally have to sit back and watch. Yeah, I know. Like, mutilation and like I literally like and I'm not coming from the feminist perspective that I I love men with all my heart and I have literally been desperately in love with people that I would literally give my life for but like guess what when it comes down to it it's like you don't even recognize what you have in your corner and you choose something that is so misguided and so misaligned when you have 
this entity, but you, you want it there kind of, but like yeah. you don't actually want it there because when you have it, you're like, uh, I'm yeah. going to go marry the, the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's just a lot, a lack of men that are willing to give up power. And it's just, it just, that's, it's holding us all back, you know? And we, it's like it, fucking it, the it's whole a, balance of the universe. Up. Our world it, is dying because of this. Like we're literally going to kill ourselves in the next 10 fucking 20 years because of this. You're, you're a hundred percent right. And that, that's literally what I write about is like, if we keep on just overpopulating the planet, it will eventually die. There will be no more space left. It's just greed and money and power. And it's so cute because we're all like, it's not my lifetime. Not I don't, oh, I don't it's like, You and I are going to see the world fucking end at this point. Like it is- I know, and, and, and everyone's too short-sighted to like, all right, look, let's just take a step back. It has to change right now. Like, I'm, I'm 41, and, I mean, it's – I think, yeah, the next decade or so, it's going to be a disgusting, more messy than it is now. It's already terrible. It's already so bad, and I'm 30, and, like, I love is, old, like, at least 10 years older than me. And so <laughs> like, they're going to leave me with Gen X for the slaughter. <laughs> and, like, please, God, don't leave me with them. Let me, like, die with you guys. Because, like, I can't, like, I'll age I'll age myself when it gets down to it because I can't be left, I can't be left to it. No, I know, and like I, I know that you're like, um, I, and like technology these days too. It's like everyone's just stuck in like the, the garbage. I mean, it's just no one's really like taking the time to like connect with humans, like what we're doing right now. You know, it's all. I know, the phone, and like all... even like this, like honestly, I went to my workout class. This is why I was. I'll say it out loud. I was two minutes late for our podcast because after my workout class, I asked someone I was working out with to go get a drink with me at the bar, and then I was like connecting with all of these fucking people oh, and okay. all the liquor distributors, and they were talking about exactly what we're talking about. They're like really? the bartender's astrological chart, the beer tender's really? astrological chart, and I was doing astrology readings at the bar, and I was like, oh, "This is why we need people." <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, because we still have, like, uh, but we're all still fucked. Like, it's not yeah. like they're any better. It's not like they're doing it. But it is, like, we have that last vestige on humanity where we had kind of, like, the dual split. Because nowadays you see people going out with their partners and they're just on their phone. Like, nobody's fucking present. And it's, like, and it's not like I'm saying technology is a bad thing wholeheartedly because there's a lot of tools that we can cool. utilize. Of course. To, like, communicate with people, but it's, like, the way it's being utilized is so fucking bullshit. Like socially, yeah. Like, if you connect, like, if you're at a restaurant with someone you care about, put your phone away and, and oh, connect. I'll smack that shit out of you. Like, are you kidding? Oh, I know. Like, you have a human conversation. It's so rude, too. It's just, it's so undignified, you know? Like, it's, just. It's just so not present. I know. Yeah, be, be present in the moment. I guess this is why this is nice. You know, we're present right now, enjoying the conversation, connecting, talking about real things, talking about the future and how to change things. Like, this is important. You've got a great show. have to fucking change it. <laughs> Thank you for coming. This is, like, literally my favorite episode. I'm not going to lie. Like, this, is, this is a great experience. Like, I mean, this is entertaining, too. Like, this is fun. It is. It's a fun thing to do. You know? I will, I will not lie when I first, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with this right now. And it took me a while to figure that out. But it's like... Yeah. I have a platform for whatever the fucking reason, just so we can actually talk because like we 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 are the only people who are gonna save the world. Not like you and me specifically, but you, me and everybody else on our soul tribe, like and why should we care? I don't know, because there's so many billionaires out there, like I'm not but I care so fucking much and I will I, never I, stop caring. Good. I, I am I'm the same. I'm the same. I will never stop caring. I will never stop trying to love others, stop being uh, kind. I want to do that, and that's what's important. That's what we're, we're doing today. So It is, and it doesn't matter if we still all die tomorrow. It's like, but, like, while we're here, like, we're meant to love. We're meant yeah. to connect. We're not meant to separate for. even further. Jealousy, stop the bullshit. Right. Like, everybody be friends. Let right. everybody live. and Connect, love, and be present in the moment. Literally just let everybody live in love. Like, let yeah. everybody experience everybody and be a good friend to your neighbor. And, like, fucking just support <laughs> people in their path because it's not always beautiful. Sometimes yeah. it's fucking ugly. Like, I have been through the ugliest and darkest shit yeah. in my life. But, like... Yeah. Support it. We're all on a journey. Like, love each other. You Support fuck. each other. Encourage and be together. Well, you're, you're right on. 
you are you are right on. Please keep doing this show. Like this is this is what we need. And keep writing. Come look at my Google Drive though, because this bitch, this bitch, I pointed myself has over fucking three hundred unpublished poems that are literally straight fire. And I just, I, I'm just like, I don't know. It's all, no, it's good. It's good. You, you, the fact that you have it, it, that means you're intelligent. You're doing the right thing because you've already, you have it on your drive. You're doing I the right thing. I have it, yeah. but I want to do something with it, and it's just like okay. my fucking psychosis brain is like, it has to be a perfect, like, so let's try. Okay, we'll just talk about it. Like I was trying, I was trying to publish my third book as called torrent pages and open skies and it's all just these poems that of Good. like heartbreak but honestly great they're beautiful poems but that's not actually what i want to put out in the world like i do actually want, eventually that's a good collection but i want to take the, the poems in my drive that are like what the fuck are we doing yeah there you go i like and that I mean, and, you know because like yeah we're all and i do want to include some of the heartbreaking ones because that's valid but it's like i don't want to publish an entire book of heartbreak that i'm there not going go. through well, I want to take everything that's like a philosophical construct, but it's like it is in poetry. Check. Like that's yeah. good. If you're – there's so much passion in what you're saying and what you're writing down and you're doing – it's important to have the heartbreak stories. And then what you said after that was that you also want to inspire. And that that's the positivity part. So you take people yeah. through that journey – and that's what I did too. Is like you, you talk about the bad. You have to you have to talk about it because it's there, and then bring people, bring them up by inspiring them with the rest of it. How life should be, like what you just said, like that. That is you're you're on the right track. Good for you. It is, and it's so easy for me to say it with my voice with writing. It's like I feel. I know like, exactly what you mean. Hey, universe, that fucking crazy righteous motherfucker who wants to represent me. I've been calling your ass in for five fucking years. Come I'm get. Just, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I know. I mean, like, what does it take? What does it take? Like, literally, come get us. Like, literally, someone wrangle in all the... Because I'm sure just, like, like you and I have all the words to say, but it's like, how do... Like, with the podcast, it's easy, because conversation is my fucking... Yeah. Chef's kiss, bread and butter. I can literally walk into the depths of hell and charm the devil into fucking letting all the angels go. You know what I mean? Like, I I have that conversation is everything. But, like, when it comes to poetry, like, I write powerful poetry, but, like, when it comes to presenting that to the world, I really flop. And I just, like, I I see. So where's our agent? Where's our agent? (laughs) Can I get an agent? (laughs) <laughs> but doing this is your practice it's like your your poetry is a conversation think of it like that you're 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 not like just reciting because i know what you mean it's it's nerve-wracking you think you're gonna be judged but if you treat it like a conversation it's also just like rhymes it's just like and and amethyst rhymes with succubus and then i got my dick stuck by a fucking exhibitionist <laughs> like you know, and it's like, that just turned into a rap, but it's like, and then I got this succulent in my hey. desk, and I got this there you go. on my spirit, and <laughs> I'm fucking blessed, bitch. But, you know, but it's all rhymey. When I write poetry, it's all fucking rhymey, and it, it, like, I do feel like it loses a lot of its power with how much I have to rhyme, because it's like, what I have to say doesn't always rhyme, and it's like, it's poetry, but I... Uh, but it gets channeled to be in poetry, so it's like, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> it doesn't have to always run. Who cares? I mean, like, I'm say- sorry. My, nope. poetry, my nope. poetry has a rhyme. <laughs> but, but good. But keep it, let, it, let it rhyme. I mean, look, you're you're onto something, and you've got something good to say. Like, we need to... I, anyway, We're but, onto something. I ain't onto something that you aren't already on, so... <laughs> Oh God! This is we this are is, onto something. So this is fantastic. We're gonna have to collaborate on something more than this I podcast. Agree. I, I agree. like literally to the world. I have a lot of people on my podcast. I love this man with all my heart. <laughs> well, Layla, I mean, this is. I'm honored to be on your show. Like this is. I'm just so happy you're here. I, I'm I'm happy to be here, and, and like just talking to you, it is. It makes me feel good to know people are on the same page of just look encouraging, inspiring inequality. That's, That's like all. literally all we can do at this exactly. point. Exactly, I agree. What a what a what a great conversation this is. <laughs> it's the best. Oh, we've been on. Um, and everybody, tell Nick to come. Can you come back? I would love to come back if you'd have me. I'd be honored to come back. And look, 
Great show, Layla. Thanks for having me on it. I'm gonna- everybody who's ever been on my show, I love you with all my heart, but not every one of you would I want to go eat waffles at 4 a.m. with, okay? And I don't even eat waffles, but I'm going to eat waffles <laughs> at 4 a.m. with Nick, okay? <laughs> and, um... Oh, God, this is fantastic. But when you have that connection, I feel like it's our duty to, like, keep that flowing, and I feel like it's our job to keep the, these conversations flowing, and I... I I'm going to give him a podcast in an hour, or else he's hosting. I've had some that are literally two hours. I just, I'm trying to cut off at that point. But, like, I also, like, I'm trying to make a point to get everybody back that has these conversations with me because, yeah. like, it's fucking important. Like, we're we're building something here. So. I agree. I want to keep this going. Great. This is a great energy, Layla. Keep, keep going. <laughs> this is a great time. Thank All you right, so much. Tell people what, like, buy the fucking, buy in the beginning, yes. you fucking scallywag. A revolutionary tale that is life-changing, and it's all about true love, equality, and achieving world peace. In the yeah. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Available on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick <laughs> motherfucker. And Talila, the female lead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Thank you. Thank you, Layla. The Layla Show.